Did you know there are 30 million evangelical born-again Christians in the United States of America that do not vote? We are Million Voices and our heart is to change that. And joining us today from the great state of Missouri, actually in Kansas City, Missouri, <laughs> is Melissa Odin, founder of the ASN. Melissa, welcome today. So glad to have you. Thank you for having me. And thank you for knowing that most of Kansas City is on the Missouri side. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. Good job, Coons. Good job. I know some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have the one of the most remarkable stories we have ever heard. So, for folks that have not, that do not know you, can you kind of give us your story, your testimony? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for me, the personal is political, and the political is personal. Oh, Nearly forty-three years ago, I survived a failed saline infusion abortion. That ages me pretty quickly, right? Uh, but for <laughs> you know, descriptive purposes, I think it's important because I survived a failed abortion in 1977. Abortion had been legalized in 1973. And so Roe versus Wade is what allowed my maternal grandmother to force an abortion upon my birth mother against her will. My birth mother really wow. fits most statistics when it comes to abortion. She was 19 a college student, wasn't married to my biological father, and sadly she was forced to have that abortion. And I know it's not pleasant to hear about or talk about, but we need to do it. And you know, for me, my story is that I soaked in this toxic salt solution of the abortion procedure for five days. That's longer than what that procedure usually involved. It was usually done within about 24 to 72 hours. But for some strange reason, the Lord gave me the spirit of being stubborn and <laughs> I, they could not induce my birth mother's labor. And so for me, that should have meant death, right? The longer I soaked in that toxic salt solution, the greater the likelihood should have been that my life was successfully ended. And so I soaked in it for five days. It was ho a horrific experience for my biological mother. And on the fifth day, they finally succeeded in inducing her labor believed that the abortion had been successful and I would be delivered as a quote unquote successful abortion. And there I was accidentally born alive. Wow. Melissa. Oh my goodness. So you have formed the ASN and that's the Abortion, abortion mm -hmm. Survivors Network. Can you tell us about it? Absolutely. I have had a pretty long journey throughout my life. Oh. I didn't know my story until I was 14. That was a very oh, wow. traumatic experience, led me down the path to find my biological parents and offer them forgiveness. And, you know, I've been blessed now to have many members of my biological family in my life, but it also led me to find more survivors. And so I founded the Abortion Survivors Network. We've now connected with over 336 other abortion survivors, uh, but we know that's the tip of the iceberg. They are, are likely thousands, if not tens of thousands of survivors like me. And so people can visit our website, abortionsurvivors.org to read more stories like mine, find some resources and really get educated about this. Our culture wants to spread the lie that abortions don't fail and that children like me don't exist in this world. And the reality is we're here. Wow. Oh, so that's beautiful. So you mentioned earlier, Melissa, that um, you went on a journey in a search to find your biological parents and offer forgiveness. Can you fill that story out a little bit? Tell us just a little bit about the heart behind doing that, what God was doing in you, and then the outcome there. I'd love to hear that story. Yeah, I think that's an important part of my story. Survivors' stories are complicated and unique, right, from person to person. But I can tell you that what really I hear time and time again is the hope, right? Yeah. The hope from our lives, the hope that comes from being able to love and forgive. And, yeah. you know, for me, I started looking for my birth parents when I was about 19, and it took me over 10 years to find them. And that's really part of my faith journey, right? God really grew me during those years having to learn to fully trust in him and his plan, even if it didn't look anything like what I had set out in my mind. Sure. And, sure. you know, in those 10 years, I learned to really understand how abortion affects each and every one of us. And so suddenly, after 10 years of searching back in 2007, I obtained my medical records. I'm one of the few survivors who has record of the procedure that was wow. supposed to end my life. Wow. And through those records, they included my birth parents' names. 
Oh my god! Wow! Wow! I what a trophy! That thing that is what a, G- a trophy. Your entire situation—it's wow. all Jesus. This is an amazing yeah, this is story. Beautiful. Wow. Yeah. And so that's what enabled me to find them. And, you know, unfortunately, my birth father passed away before we could ever communicate. But his family ended up finding out about me after his passing. My grandfather was a huge part of my life until he passed away earlier this year. Um, My paternal great great aunt is still part of my family. Um, And for my birth mother, you know, as you can imagine, it's even more complicated. We did not connect until actually 2013. Even though I knew who she was back in 2007, I just could not communicate or find her because of just obstacles that existed. And so suddenly in 2013, some of her family reached out to me and I learned the greatest secret that I never could have imagined about my life. And that's that my birth mother did not know for over 30 years that I had survived that abortion. Oh, Melissa. Oh my goodness. They told her that you had passed. Oh. Oh my gosh. Okay. So in in this culture that we live in today, where bitterness is literally um, encouraged as some sort of power, like, hey, if you do this, it's going to fix the situation. Talk to us about that kind of forgiveness. I can tell you that I would not be who I am. I would not do what I do if I had not been given that heart to love and forgive them. And it's not the human nature, right? This is this is God's heart, that grace mm-hmm. that allows us to love and forgive. And, you know, honestly, that's probably my favorite part of my life story is that because I've loved and forgiven my birth mother and my abortionist and my grandmother who was responsible for it all, my birth mother was able to come into my life. It took her years to really trust me. And it was hard not to take that personally. But what I came to understand is that she had never been loved like that before. Oh, wow. Everything in her family was so conditional, right? Do as I say, do as I do, and then we'll love you. You know, then we'll support you. And so this was a brand new kind of love. And so- This is beautiful. She's now this huge part of my family. My One of my daughters just had her birthday. Who was the first grandmother to send a message? Oh my, my, wow. my, biological my biological mother that day. Oh, that's so well, beautiful. Well, this is, this is the gospel. It this is the, is the gospel. gospel. It's the nearly too good to be true news. <laughs> oh, it really, yeah. really is. <laughs> yeah, I love it because people will go, she has got to be lying. I mean, how does any of this happen? Yeah, only yeah. God, right? Well, if people aren't saying that, maybe we aren't doing it right. You know what I mean? (laughs) That's helpful. Yeah. So, um, Melissa, tell us a couple of ways that you have engaged in like your civic duty with federal government, um, because we'd really like to know how you've taken action. Yeah, I am just as ordinary as everybody else. Let's just be really honest. I want to put that (laughs) out there. I am an ordinary person, just like you, who has been called by God to do extraordinary things. And for me, it might look a little bit different than everybody else, but I want to use that as encouragement because if I can do what he has led me to do, then all of your listeners can do what they're being led to do. So, you know, I ended up giving up my career as a social worker to get involved in pro-life activism. Mm -hmm. And I have testified before Congress more times than I can count. Mm -hmm. Um, I travel around the world and I've testified before parliament. I'm called as an expert witness time and time again. Uh, You know, I take a lot of slings and arrows. This is not a, this is not a convenient life story. Oh my right? Sure. And so I, I go wherever the Lord leads me. I met with President Trump in the Oval Office back in 2019, right? I joke one minute I'm scrubbing a toilet, the next minute I'm meeting the president. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my civic duty, friends. <laughs> <laughs> so tell uh, us, it's, it, people say that he's the most pro-life president that we've ever had. Is that true? Absolutely. 120%. And, you know, I can honestly tell you, I didn't enter into the last election seeing him that way, right? I think I was as cautious as many people. And every move he has made, I have been so impressed by him. I can tell you, meeting with members of, you know, his team, they are incredible faith-filled 
people who believe in the sanctity of human life and they're walking it out. And I just found my time with him to be so encouraging. He was warm and funny and of course, so right. Passionate. Uh, it, yeah, it was just incredible. Wow. That's awesome. Okay. I have an off book question. Is that okay, guys? (laughs) Go for it. Sure. (laughs) With an issue that is so apparent, especially uh, with your story and a person in your position, why is abortion still legal? Mm. <laughs> Isn't that the million dollar question? <sighs> when we find the answer to that, we will have a completely different society, won't we? I mean, I think there's a few factors at play. The abortion industry, you know, of course, spreads a lot of lies, right? It's built on lies. It's built on money. You know, my life... <laughs> my life never should have been in danger, right? Mm, No. The 60 million children who lose their lives every single year, they have dignity and value. So I think part of it is simply the lies that the abortion industry is built on, the lies that Roe versus Wade was founded upon, right? That's lie upon lie upon lie. And the fact that any kind of truth, any kind of story, whether it's mine or a woman who regrets her abortion, right, or a former clinic worker like Abby Johnson, right, anytime somebody's experience doesn't fit that narrative that pushes abortion, then it gets buried, okay. right? They, they have the money and the power to bury it. And, you know, I think the other big piece, too, is simply we live in a culture that has turned away from God and denies the dignity and value of every human life. If this isn't, if this is choice, like what they want to call it, then why doesn't anybody ever want to be in my shoes? Mm. Wow. That's a great Nobody's question. ever wanted to be in my shoes. Yeah. Oh, Melissa, thank you for being in your shoes. We love your shoes. <laughs> they are powerful shoes. I've learned to my... love them too. They're actually pretty beautiful. <laughs> they are beautiful <laughs> shoes. Beautiful. Thank you so much. So we, we always like to give um, our contributors an, a moment right here at the very end to speak to Christians and tell them why is it important for them to get involved in politics? Yeah, it's the uncomfortable thing, right? I mean, I thank you guys for being willing to have this conversation because I think, you know, as Christians, we love to get involved, right? Like we love to live out the gospel. We love to serve women and children and families in need. And then we talk about politics and people go, (laughs) trust me, I get that. Um, But the reality is we cannot leave this in anybody else's hands. And the truth is, without the right to life, there is no other right. So if people want to try to peg me and say that I'm a one, you know, a single issue voter, I would like to say that a single issue is the foundation for every other issue. And so I hope that, you know, as Christians, we are bold and unafraid to say, you know what, this is what God believes, right? He believes in the dignity and value of every human life, and he wants us to fulfill our calling to make that happen. And so we will get to a point someday where abortion is unthinkable. But until then, we have to see politics as the vehicle that helps us create that. Wow. So thank you so, so well much. Said. We are just inspired. We appreciate you very much. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Visit millionvoices.org today for more resources. We will be posting more videos just like this from thought leaders across the nation. Each of the videos connects to one of our 10 guiding truths. Today, we talked about life. Please visit millionvoices.org and click on guiding truths and get more content that matters to you. Also, be sure to like us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Share these video links with your friends and your families. And remember, your your voice voice matters. matters.